Wow. What a great night to be a Gamecock. And uh, uh, I want to thank our fans, first of all, for the atmosphere and the environment in there. I appreciate the ones that were in there. Uh, for those of you that didn't come and missed it, you missed one hell of a game. And you missed an unbelievable performance by our football team who uh, works their butts off during the week and, and deserved that tonight because of the way they worked and the way they fight. Because it may have been ugly up until this point, but one thing you can't question is how hard our kids play and, uh, and the passion they play with week in, week out. Uh, so, so happy for them and the success they had tonight and really appreciate the fans that were there as well. You created a great environment, unbelievable group of recruits that were here. Uh, just peeked at my phone, so many text messages from recruits that weren't here uh, that wish they had been here. So excited about the future of Carolina football uh, as well. Um, that's a good football team that we just beat. Uh, so I hope we don't start with the narrative about uh, Florida and, 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 and anything. That Tonight was about South Carolina. And that is a team with a bunch of really good players. I know they had some guys out tonight, but they had a bunch of really good guys in there that we were competing against. And, and that's the whole thing. We, we've talked ever since that A&M game about competing. And we've had the two best weeks of practice that we've had all season coming off that A&M loss. Um, practices have been spirited, energized, um, physical, competitive. And we expected to win this football game uh, like we did. Nobody was shocked uh, at how it went. We, we fully expected this tonight because of the way that we've prepared and practiced uh, the last two weeks as well. Uh, just so many competitive plays that guys made. I mean, wow, offense, defense, special teams. I mean, that's been the name of the game for the last two weeks is just compete, compete, compete. And, uh, and, and you saw that. I mean, I can go on and on to some of the catches our receivers made, some of the runs our running backs made, uh, the, the, the solo tackle Damani Staley made on that fourth down, uh, on and on and on. I mean, it was, it was awesome and fun to see. Uh, we know what Florida's about as far as being able to run the football. Um, I told you guys earlier in the week, they put 100 plus more yards on Georgia last season than what Georgia had been giving up on average. So this was a team that could run the football. We knew coming into it, we had to stop the run. If, if we got beat with Emory Jones throwing deep balls over our heads for big plays, so be it. But we weren't going to let them beat us running the football. And what a job our defense to hold those, these guys to 82 yards rushing. That's phenomenal. And then for us to run the ball for 284, uh, what a night. We controlled the line of scrimmage, and that's where it – that's where it uh, that's where it started, and and you know the thing is, uh, we 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 could have been a lot better too. Uh, we kicked way too many field goals. Credit Parker White for kicking four field goals, but you know that's 28 points in the red zone that we, that we couldn't could didn't get because we didn't score touchdowns. We got to do a good job, a better job of scoring in the red zone. Uh, we had some sloppy drives in the fourth quarter offensively that. Uh, it's a couple three and outs when we had a chance to finish the game. But what a drive right there at the end. I mean, to take the ball down the field and we didn't get points out of it. But I mean, we lined up with Trey Jones at fullback and ran the same play, I think, three or four times in a row. So you want old school north south football, physical football. There you go. Uh, it doesn't get any more old school, more physical than that than putting your offensive lineman at fullback and, and playing ball. So uh, we're going to enjoy this one. Um, you know, by no means have. Have we arrived? We're still a work in progress, but we took a great step tonight. And then the key for us is going to be to continue to build on this. We've got a big challenge next week going out to Missouri and, um, and then coming back home for two, two, uh, two home games to finish out the season. But what a night. What a night for the South Carolina Gamecock Nation. And, um, and uh, Clayton White said it on the headphones late in the game. This is why we came to South Carolina. Uh, this is why this is my dream job and nowhere else that I want to be. And, and this is why these coaches came here is for nights like this. And, and we're going to have a bunch of more nights like this going forward. And, and uh, certainly proud of our kids and the way they played tonight. And so proud to be their coach and, and uh, just, just love coaching them. Um, you know, when we, when, we, when, we, when we play like we did at Texas A&M, when we come into the building on Sunday, the day after, after getting back at 4 o'clock in the morning, they're eager to learn, see, learn from their mistakes, and then they go out on the practice field and they get right back to work to get better. And tomorrow will be the same. So um, great night. and we got to continue to progress and get better, but we're going to enjoy the heck out of this for sure. Any questions? Ben Briner. Uh, Shane, uh, at least from up here, it looked like this was your offensive line's best game by a pretty good margin. What, what do you credit that to? And did, did you expect them to be able to come out and just be able to dominate the way they kind of did? Um. Yes. I mean, I know you guys think I'm crazy when I tell you that I see how we practice and then sometimes it's frustrating the way we've played and we haven't played good enough. But, you know, every single person, we just we, we made a individual commitment to win your one on one battles, 
be physical, and then just compete. And, and that's what we've just talked about for two weeks and what we talked about in the team meeting at the hotel last night, what we talked about in the team meeting at the hotel before we came to the stadium, and what we talked about in the locker room right before we took the field is that there's just a bunch of one-on-one individual battles all over the field, every single play with the 22 guys out there, and that we needed to compete our butts off better than we have been and, and win those. And uh, credit, you know, Coach Satterfield and Coach Atkins and the rest of our offensive staff for putting together a great plan, um, and um, and and giving them, you know, giving putting together a scheme that gives our guys a chance to to be successful. And uh, and, and they did, and they played physical, and and it was fun to it was fun to watch them from that standpoint. Ben Portnoy. Shane, we've heard you talk about how, you know, this is your dream job. You live for nights like this at South Carolina. When you're standing on the sideline, you're looking up at the scoreboard and you're seeing what's going on and what you guys are doing. What does that feel like in that moment? And You know, what are you feeling when you're seeing, you know, guys racing into the end zone and hitting on big plays? And, and what does that feel like as a coach standing there along the sideline? Um, proud, happy. You know, just I'm, I've told you guys before, and it may sound cheesy, but, but I love coaching these kids, and I'm just so – um, hungry for them to have success because they work so hard and they work so hard to do everything right on and off the field and then to not be rewarded or to not play well out in Texas A&M or Tennessee or wherever, it, it stinks. And you look inward is what you can do better as a coach to give these kids a better chance to be successful because they are giving you everything that we asked. And, and they committed to that, and, and, um, and it makes me very proud and, 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 and fun. It's what – you know this this stadium is 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 rocking on nights like this and and I remember you know days and nights like this when I was here as an assistant coach previously with coach Spurrier and what this place can be and and um it's just uh, you know it's a very proud moment for sure just watching our guys compete and play with great energy and have fun Colin Taylor yeah, Shane, you obviously mentioned the defense. What did you see from them, and how pleased are you with the effort and just kind of big plays from turnovers to third down that you saw? And, and do you plan on keeping the hat around for a little bit now that you won the game wearing it? Yeah, I probably will. thought we were going to get some rain, so I put the hat on um, for the rain coming, but it worked. I may have to keep it on for sure, whatever. Not that I'm superstitious or anything. Uh, but, no, they were they were awesome. They um, – you know, disappointing. A couple of those big passes they hit on us early in the game. I mean, we, we total. I mean, our guys knew we were going to make some plays. I mean, we were going to load the box, stop the run, and Florida was going to have to was going to get some one on one opportunities, and they did. And it's disappointing because on a couple of those big plays, you know, we should have had should have been uh, uh, played a little bit better technique wise, and, and uh, should have been able to defend those two big passes early on better than what we did. Uh, but. They controlled the they controlled the line of scrimmage, and um, I mean we put pressure put pressure on the quarterback. I'm not sure how many sacks we had, but I mean we put pressure on him, and and uh, you know to hold that quarterback to to uh, 26 yards net rushing it looks like, and, and not not allow them to get that running game going was uh, was key because that's a big physical offensive line they have, and they got talented tight ends, and they got receivers with size. So those guys played great, and when we talk about competitive plays, it's the same thing. It's it's Zach Pickens and Jabari Ellis winning their one on ones in there against Florida's offensive line. It's 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 Cam Smith and Darius Rush and Marcellus Dial and our DBs at, our corners winning those one on ones against receivers and Jalen Foster and RJ making one on one tackles. Thought we tackled well and and created a huge turnover before the half. So those guys flew around and and played really really hard and and um, and had a lot of fun out there doing it. David Kleiniger. Hey, Shane, what did you think of Jason's performance? And is it fair to say that, you know, he's pretty much going to be your starting QB for the rest of the uh, Jay, uh Jason played his butt off. I mean, I'm going to enjoy that. I'm going to enjoy this, David. I mean, I'm going to go home tonight and, and relax and watch the game on my iPad and, and – uh, and we'll evaluate after every game, but Jason was fantastic. I mean, he was Zeb. First of all, Zeb was fantastic all week, and on the headphones tonight, helping Jason uh, throughout the game and talking to Sat and communicating from the sidelines. So credit Zeb for the type of player and leader and young man he is. And and Jason was Jason was was uh, awesome. You know, I mean, he protected the football. He showed his ability to run. Got himself out of trouble a couple times and got out of the pocket. And, and, and I did, we just talked about it, and I told the team in the locker room, and so it's, it's a great testament to what he's about, and it's a great example for all the kids in our program that he, he, 
had every right to complain and be upset about him not playing early in the season, but all he did was just come to work and prepared every week to be the starting quarterback and prepared every week for his opportunity. And we told him after spring practice he needed to lose weight, and he did. You know, he spent a ton of time on his own this summer. Just if you looked out my window in the office at 5 p.m. on a summer afternoon when nobody was here, there's a pretty good chance he was out there on the practice field just running on his own, trying to lose weight. So he prepared for this night. We talked about it in our team meeting last night that, you know, it's his first start at Carolina, but he started 12 games previously at St. Francis. And then I looked up, uh, credit Steve Fink and Michael for having this in our media guide, what Jason's uh, stats were for his first start ever at St. Francis, and I think he threw for like 300 yards and was the conference player of the week and set a school record for passing yards for a guy in his first start. So we told the team that last night, and and it was pretty cool to see their reaction. Now, did I know he was going to come in and we'd be able to run the ball this well and he'd throw play as well as he did? You know, I, that was I was optimistic, but uh, the moment wasn't too big for him. I mean, he's coming up to me on the sideline throughout the game asking me if I'm good. And is everything okay? And and all that checking on me, and I'm, <laughs> so I was, uh, but that's just his his mentality. Doesn't you know? He stays pretty level headed and even keeled, and and uh, happy for him to have that success tonight. Dick Cox, Coach Spurrier was at the game tonight. Though, did you get a chance to actually talk with him? Did he offer any words of wisdom to you? <laughs> no, uh, I saw him Thursday night. Uh, after I finished my radio show, he was uh, he was eating dinner with uh, Jerry nearby, and uh, I walked over to the radio sh- or after the radio show, I walked over and spent some time with him. And he was very complimentary of our football team on Thursday night, um, and and talked about you know how hard our guys are playing, and and uh, uh, was very complimentary. So it was great to see him. I saw him on the field before the game briefly, talked to Jerry for a few minutes, but didn't get to spend a lot of time with him. Uh, tonight, but I did get to see him on Thursday. And I'm very thankful for him and the opportunity he gave me at, at Carolina back in 2007 and, and all he taught me and, and for the great times that we had here together and, and uh, appreciate that for sure. Mike Yuba. Hey, Shane, going back with uh, Jason Brown, uh, first question is, when did you let him know that he was going to be the guy? I know you guys like to try to keep things internally, um, but when did he he know? Because obviously trying to prepare for that moment. Yeah, um, probably a better question for him, to be honest with you. I don't know if I ever actually just flat out told him he was going to be the starter. I mean, I think he had a pretty good idea with, with the conversations with he, that he has had with sat all week i mean when zeb got the surgery we were optimistic that zeb was gonna you know get back and be able to potentially play but but zeb obviously didn't practice the off week and then he was limited where jason just got all the reps you know this week and this week in practice um so as far as an exact conversation or day there really wasn't one i mean i think he kind of just understood that he was going to be the guy and and that's how we handled the reps this week and and uh, he just took it and ran with it Corey diaz Corey Diaz. Hey Shane, uh, during your uh, your opening statement, uh, you said something that I uh, caught my that piqued my interest. You said tonight was about South Carolina. Can you, can you just kind of expand a little bit more upon that? Uh, what you meant by that, and and what do you think the the message and or statement uh, was that this team made? This season? Uh, it's a team that continues to get better and better and um, loves each other, cares for one another. We talked about it before the game that we needed to be the closest, most connected team on the field tonight, and I think we were. Um, it's a testament to them for how they just continue to work and just get better and put your put your head down and just go and, and not – not worry about what's being said on the outside, just the people that in our building or what matter, and uh, just continue to get better. We, we knew we had a good football team. I know we didn't look like it when we played out in Texas A&M two weeks ago, and it wasn't always pretty against Vandy. But, you know, that was one thing Coach Spurrier did tell me, uh, Dick, on Thursday night was you guys are 4-4 four and four and you've won a lot of close games, which is not easy to do um, in your first year, which I appreciate him saying that. And we have. You know, winning's hard. And I know everybody expects us to just – you know, 
the teams that you're supposed to beat, beat them by a certain margin and all that, that well, they got good team, good players too. And uh, winning is hard. So I think tonight was a great testament for our kids and how much they love each other and how much they love playing for each other and, and this staff. And when I say it was for South Carolina, it's a great night, you know, for Gamecock Nation and, and for the Carolina fans across the, the state that it – there, there haven't been a lot of great moments like this over the last uh, couple years. And just like our players were, you know, um, I want them to have success. I want these fans that are so uh, passionate for us uh, to be able to celebrate and have nights uh, like this as well. So just really happy for them, really happy for our players. And uh, hopefully we've got a lot more of these, uh, these games coming like this as well. Gene Chapikoff. Shane, oh, hold on, uh, hold on, Gene, and we will if uh, those a lot of those recruits that were in that stadium tonight and the ones that are texting me on my phone, if they decide to come to Carolina, we'll have some even more fantastic nights than this. Sorry, Gene, go ahead. Congratulations, Shane. Um, I know you realize that you guys really struggled on first down in particular in College Station, and tonight you were particularly incredible on first down. I have you for 256 yards on 29 first down plays. You talked about the one-on-one -on -one battles in that. Um, was there any more strategical difference, different emphasis in practice? What can you say about your success on first down? Not really. You know, I think it goes back a little bit to some of the self-scout stuff that we did, um, maybe trying to break some tendencies on first down, uh, but not a ton. Uh, we started the game with that flea flicker, you know, just trying to take a deep shot down the field. And that was a heck of a play by Jason on that one because that ball is supposed to be – you know, thrown for a touchdown to, I think it was EJ or whoever we had in there. Um, and and Jason and Josh Van did a great job of connecting after that. But just trying to be a, trying to be more aggressive on first down. But it really is, Gene, as simple as just executing. I mean, I felt like we had some good first down calls against Texas A&M that we didn't just – we didn't execute for whatever reason. And, and uh, we did tonight, but it, we – we knew it's no secret that we haven't gotten off to great starts in the first quarter. Uh, so I talked about it with Clayton and Sat, you know, earlier this week. We always talk about how we're going to start the game and, and, and play the first quarter and openers and all that. But we really, really needed to have a great uh, plan, you know, to start the game on, on all three phases, and, and we did. Joe Machica. Hey, Coach, all four running backs seem to be producing tonight. Um, what, what was clicking in the run game to allow all four, go, all four guys to go off like that? I think we did some good things schematically. Um, you know, tried to get in some, into some certain formations and, and you know, check on, checking the run based on how they lined up and a couple of different options out of a couple of different formations. And our guys did a good job of handling that and executing it. But really, it just gets down to trying to be more physical up front and, and be the most physical group on the field, our uh, physical player on the field. And our offensive line uh, moved people and came off the ball with great physicality. And our, ran, our running backs – ran the ball hard with great physicality. I um, mean, I'm sitting here looking at it. Kevin averaged eight yards. Zaquandre averaged eight and a half. And Marshawn averaged right at seven. I mean, that's unbelievable because that's a good defense. And uh, I know they've had a couple some issues in a couple games running the football, but it's also the same defense that uh, was, was held Georgia to basically three points throughout pretty much the entire first half last week. Uh, so credit our guys. And, and again, we've got to continue to get better. I mean, we haven't arrived and, and – uh, we've got an eight-game body of work that we've built up to this point. Now the key for us is going to be to continue to get better and, and be better against Missouri next week than we, what we were tonight. Last question goes to John Whittle. Yeah, I was going to ask about the run game as well, but to expand on, on what you said, how much did uh, just being successful running the ball help the entire offense, help help Jason be a little bit better and take some pressure off of him? Yeah, huge, because it slowed down their pass rush. I mean, they got some weapons that can rush the passer. I mean, guys that we wanted at Georgia, guys that we recruited at Oklahoma that were out there tonight. So they've got a good pass rush. And, and when you can run the football, that, that certainly – uh, slows that down and then they brought some pressure and our guys did a good job of picking it up for the most part but certainly any time when you're able to to run the ball for 284 yards that's going to make it easy because it's going to open up more and more things and in, in the passing game off of play action which we hit muse on that little pop pass down the middle um, 
And I hope Lincoln's proud of me because that's a play we stole from him as well that we ran all the time at Oklahoma. So I hope he was watching. Um, and, and then we got one-on-one -on -one opportunities. And you saw guys like Josh Van and those guys win those one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the, on the outside as well because they're trying to load the box to stop the run. So we've got to continue to, to win those one-on-one -on -one battles. And again, a lot that we can be better at looking at it doesn't look like we're very good on third downs we got to be better there but you know certainly uh really proud of our guys the way we finish drives and and uh, the way we played and like i said at the beginning of this thing the way we competed uh that's what i'm most proud of all right thank you coach yep thank you guys have a good night enjoy your weekend